today we'll look at how to transfer loads from motion to pre-post. Here we have a motion simulation with a flexible body that's already been set up with an auto flex generation. Here just to review, what you would do is select uh, material if it was not already inherited and then also define connections based on the link that you've selected. So here we'll select the upper drag link and then you'll see a number of connections that relate to the joints and you'll need to select the geometry that you'd like those joints to connect to. This has all already been done. The automatic flex body has been created and this was the process that was used. Now we also solved the model and here we can take a look at the results and here we've sort of done a quasi-static analysis, even though it's a dynamic uh, transient run. Here you can see it's run for a total of five seconds to get some static results. Now to transfer these loads to pre-post, first we'll do a quick load transfer, and this will list the time steps for the motion loads in the load transfer. And then we can go to our pre-post model that was automatically generated by the auto flex generation. Now before we import those loads, let's make sure that we put them on an empty layer. Now we're not only going to get loads, we're also going to get nodes that those loads are applied to. So we also need to make the work layer an empty layer in both the FEM and the SIM before we import our motion loads. So here we'll go ahead and select that motion SIM that we just did our quick load transfer in and we'll see the loads from our flex body. And it will import them onto layer 11. So here you can see those loads. They're inactive because they haven't been added to uh, solution yet, but we'll do that in just a moment. First what we're going to do is merge the nodes that were imported from our FlexBody Motion import into the existing nodes from our joints that were already developed with our FlexBody definition. And in order to merge those nodes, we first need to associate an element with those nodes. So we'll create some dummy 0D elements on those nodes and that will allow us to then merge the nodes so that we can combine those nodes that have been imported with our motion loads with those nodes that exist for our motion spiders. So here you can see there's four duplicates and we want to retain the high node label. That's the one that has the motion loads associated with it. And then we can go ahead and delete our dummy 0D elements. If we don't create those 0D elements, we won't be able to retain the high node label with our node merge. So now we're ready to create uh, some new solutions. We'll first create a linear static solution. We'll make sure that our subcase is active. And then we can drag our imported loads into our subcase. Now these loads are transient, so if we take a look at one of them, we'll see that the results span from 0 seconds to 5 seconds. And this is a linear static solution, so we need to select a load case evaluation time, which we'll pick at a steady state time, which is 5 seconds. So let's go ahead and specify that 5 seconds in our subcase for our boundary condition evaluation time and then we're ready to solve. I'll go ahead and pause the movie but it only takes uh, five seconds to run here. And then we can view our results. So here I've not assigned any constraints. We did an inertial relief run for our linear static solution. So here you can see our displacement results and our stress results.
All right, so that looks good. Next, what we can do is create a multi-step nonlinear solution. Solution 401. And we'll create a new solution here. We could specify uh, nonlinear materials or large strains that we'd like to solve for as well. And then we'll create a nonlinear dynamic subcase where we'll evaluate the loads uh, up to five seconds with one step because we're only interested in the results at five seconds. Then we can drag our loads that we imported earlier into our nonlinear multi step solution and solve. And here I'll pause the movie again. Since this is a nonlinear solution, it takes a little bit longer than the linear static solution, but still runs in about 10 seconds. And then we can take a look at our nonlinear results and compare them side by side with our linear static results. So here, because we don't have any constraints, the dynamic solution the displacements are kind of flying off, so let's turn off displacements for our nonlinear dynamic solution. But you can still see that the stresses correlate well between the linear static and nonlinear dynamic solutions. Mm -hmm.